Hi guys and welcome to another video and I thought it was about time I updated you on what was going on with my Anglo Zulu War project. Now the first update or the first video I made about this was about four months ago and uh, it was when I started a project and I'd done my first uh, unit of Zulus and I was just planning I was sort of just talking about what I'd done. Now I've got to apologise for the lack of updates on this. I mean, if you watched a Plastic Crack podcast, you might have seen me just throwing up a few units here and there, just showing what I've painted. The reason that I haven't updated on this project, well, there's a couple of reasons. One is because I, I basically probably started it a little bit earlier than I should have done and hadn't done as much research as I probably would normally do. However, um, I always knew that I would want a lot of Zulus. So I didn't really see the point in updating the project until I actually had something substantial because otherwise it would just be, I've painted a unit of Zulus, I've painted another unit of Zulus, I've painted some more bases of Zulus, I've painted some, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, However, I'm now at a place where I feel like I've, I've done a decent a decent chunk. You can see how I'm planning on going about the project and what I'm planning on doing. So I thought I'd share that with you and then give you some ideas on the ideas I've had as I've been doing this on how my project is going to progress. And you should probably see some updates coming um, a little bit more regularly on this. So what you can see in front of you is everything I've completed for the Zulus at the moment. So I have done three uh, units or three warbands, whatever you want to call them. Um, regiments will do, Amabuto. Um, and these are, the, um, are going to be the main backbone of the army. I've also completed three bases of skirmishers and I've done a command base. Now this is how I envisage if, if you're going by black powder terms, the an average brigade. So three units strong of Zulus and then some skirmishers and, and one commander. Um, let me just say right now, if I butcher any pronunciations, <laughs> then I'm I am really sorry. I am gonna work on those, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. Um, so all of these Zulus here are from Perry, with the exception of my Induna here, uh, which is from Empress Miniatures. Um, but I'll come on to this command base um, in a little while. Um, so I want to talk about him and a few of the decisions that I've made. So when I did my first update, I'd done this regiment over here, who are the Mbelebele uh, regiment, who have white shields with red spots. Um, they were a married Zulu regiment. Um, now the married and unmarried, essentially the way to tell them apart from, from my reading um, is it's very simply, are the Zulus wearing the head ring? So you'll see on some of these Zulus, if I take this base out here, they've got the black head ring on there and if you take an unmarried Zulu unit they won't have that and I've done one unit of unmarried. Now there seems from the reading I've done and um, there's a lot on the subject uh, this Miss Des apparently is a mistaken um, idea that maybe married and unmarried represents some kind of better or elite status. Uh, essentially the the married units are going to be older and um, you know he, the, the king can marry whole regiments at a time and so they may be older but once they become married they actually drop out of any kind of standing service they become more of a reserve from my understanding um, and it's actually the unmarried units who are going to be the younger warriors um, the ones who are more in the sort of a standing army and they're the ones who are going to be say more vicious so you, you could introduce some rules to reflect that I have my own ideas on how I'm going to um, sort of introduce a bit of variety into the rules and again I'll to talk about that in a second so let's just have a look at those units so as I said I'd already completed this uh, this regiment here so this was my test regiment to make sure that I wanted to uh, to even do the project, and uh, I did. I have based everything on these big red bat bases. Now these are uh, the F, K, and P six bases. That's uh, these ones here. As you can see, they come with uh, pre-drilled magnet holes. So, so if you're going to use magnets like like that, you can just pop them in. Handy tip if you're going to um, do what I do and just create sort of put the basing paste down, then stick the models on. Put an arrow on the bottom so you can remember which way is front so that then these actually link together again if you're going to do something like that it's a handy little tip which i wish someone had told me um anyway um i felt that these best represented um a warband was a, a deeper 
formation. Now the frontage is still going to be enough for a standard unit in black powder, um, or at least standard on the way that I've decided to play, because as long as I'm, I'm playing on the same um, uh, frontage it doesn't really matter but again you're going to see that in a minute so I decided that four of these bases would make up a unit and then I've put somewhere between six and eight Zulus per base so I know you've already seen these ones so I won't spend too long on these but you can see here and I've just tried to mix them up put them in interesting poses add a casualty here or there or maybe uh, just try to do something with with the models that is a little bit more unusual and um, you'll see I've tried that over here um, in a second um, the next unit I did which is this unit in the middle uh, is the now I'm gonna I, I'm not it's the Unkijo unit um, now their shields were black and um, they were at Isamwana, Kambula, Lundi, and Gringonuva. And there we are. So I was really pleased with that. Now, I, I, I'm unashamed about to say that I've I have purely picked my Zulu regiments that I'm doing on their shield colors and I just want to see that nice mix of, of shields and patterns um, when these are all on the table because if you got as you guys know the visual aspect when I come to Wargaming is, is a big draw for me so there we go so you can see here I just decided to, uh, to add a little bit of flavor at the front of the base with two Zulus who have been been caught in the fire using one of the kneeling ones here just to sort of maybe point where that fire came from the pointing is always handy because like this guy in the middle here you can give him a bit of a commanding view um i've tried to keep a very simple scheme for my zulus and i feel like i'm i'm in a place that um i, I can actually knock these out quite quickly I've, I've worked out i can do about two of these bases a week and that's while i'm working on other projects but um i use a a black primer spray it's actually it's called hyrax brown it's from color forge um, i use that over everything and then i pick out a lot of the details like the uh, like the loincloths and um and the sort of the furs and things like that and then i spend longer on the shields and the headbands than i do really any other part i whack some quick shade on here and then i go back and i pick out details and add dry brushing on the uh, skin and then pick out things like the eyes um so there's this regiment now this is the unmarried regiment as i say and then the final regiment i've done and these are the ones that i'm actually the most proud of at the moment i think that's because i like the shields the most and this is the Udloko regiment now they have red shields with one white spot um, and these were a married regiment and these guys were isamwana their reserve went off to rourke's drift um, they were also a, a lundi and the Battle of Kambula. So um, there we go. So as you can see, I tried to do these ones like maybe they were sort of avoiding or peeling off to make an attack. But these um, these shields are a lot of fun to work on. I will have pictures up of all of these at the end of the video so you can see them all, each of the, each of the regiments. You can see on this one, I've uh, sneak peek because I've got some red coats coming in the video. I, uh, I added a dead red coat onto onto here from and i've done him up as if he's from the the 24th and as we know they did suffer quite heavily um is someone now i did add this chap here and then i only realized the other day that he sort of looks like he's reclining so i need to do something about that um i'll probably just maybe i'll just put a big tuft in front of his uh, his arm there but i tried to do it so you can see sort of this guy's just looking at the fallen british soldier there's an, um, sort of another one behind him who's uh, getting ready and maybe they're backing off a little bit or they're unsure um ultimately it doesn't really matter the base you know the bases um don't have individual stats it's the unit but like this one here i just tried to just tell a little story on each base so using the spare shields that you get in the boxes and just repositioning arms and legs and putting different heads on things you can get quite a lot um there's this guy here who's been thrown back by um fire from the martini henry's i've tried not to make it too gruesome but the problem is is that when you're trying to hide wounds on say on the zulu bodies obviously you don't have to put wounds on them but otherwise it just kind of looks like they're falling you know they're just they're just tripping over or something so i tried to add some small um bullet wounds to there um and around the other side 
there are um, exit wounds as well, but I tried not to make it too gross. I think you know, probably the, the most gratuitous thing I did is that I added some blood splatter onto the shield of the man behind him to just represent him maybe them getting hit. But I didn't want to make it too gratuitous, but as I say, if they are a casualty I, and they're sort of in this pose, I thought I, I kind of needed to show that something had happened to them. Now, for the skirmishers, um, I decided to do things a little bit differently. Now, you probably remember in my last video, um, if not, you can you can check it out. That my idea was that if a unit was armed with firearms, then you could have maybe these bases at the front of the unit like this, just to represent that. Um, however, I want I will do that, but I also wanted them to be able to be free units that are moving around on the board and just just putting down um, a little bit of gunfire. The Zulus did have firearms. A lot of the firearms up until the point of the Anglo-Zulu War were outdated flintlocks or uh, percussion cap rifles. Um, after Isamwana, they captured a lot of the Martini Henry rifles. Now, I will talk about this in a moment. In fact, actually, no, I'll talk about it now. I feel like the Zulu rules in the Zulu uh, expansion for Black Powder or the supplement have slightly underplayed the importance, well, not the importance, but the effectiveness of this fire. Now, if you do, re if you read any of these books, you will see that the Zulus, it will say that, you know, they, they didn't know how to range in properly or set the sights um and um, it wasn't a particularly effective but there was a great deal of it there was a lot of firearms in these units um so i feel like actually having these little units uh, or just single units that are around the board not generating much fire but enough because in the accounts of the battles um i was reading one the other day and, I, and um he did the first casualty was someone who was taken out a uh, british soldier was taken out by a essentially a zulu sharpshooter um now that was you've got to remember that these battles aren't as big as saving napoleonic battles so some battles the british were only suffering 20 30 casualties but in some of them it looks like about 10 percent 10 15 were caused by um by gunfire from the zulus so um anyway that was that's my little just point about those but i've tried to create these little bases so they can be added to the units and just add a little bit of flavor as well so um again just mixing the arms and the uh, the heads so you can create something a little bit more interesting um now the basing itself as you can see here this is a good example i've watched quite a lot of videos now um about rorks drift and this someone and the zulu war and i really really recommend um, the channel uh, Redcoat History. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are already aware of his videos. Um, but he does, because he's in South Africa, he does a lot of walking around on the battlefields. And I noticed that th there's a, a certain reddish quality to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the sand and to the clay and just the soil over there. So I, I've used my basing pastes and I've added uh, pigments into it. In fact, I added this pigment here that's simply called uh, Terracotta earth by secret weapon miniatures um gonna have to get some more so i'll just mix some of that in to just kind of give it a bit, a bit of a reddish quality and i think you can you can see it here if you compared it to how the paste would normally look and also th th this idea sometimes i you, you see them presented in pictures the zulus like they're like it's almost like desert basing it's not it's, there's grasslands there's there's thick grasses there's there's woodlands there's there's lots of scrub there's places for them uh, to take cover lots of rocks as well um so after i've done the basing i put down um a four mil layer of uh spring grass then a four mil layer of um some grass on top and then I add all the bushes in um, and things like that. The rocks are taken from uh, my back garden um, or anywhere that I find interest in rocks and I put these in the basing paste a bit like if you've seen my crusade videos how I do it and then I, I pull the basing paste with a lot of water up onto it so that you end up with sort of this washed out effect where um, all the pigment from the base will settle in the crevices on these rocks and, and sort of blend it in. Um, and I think the, probably one of the best ways to see this is on my command base. Now, I picked this model up from Empress Miniatures over at Warfare at the end of last year. Um, I really like it. Now, the, the Zulus did trade and have um, some horses from the Boers and from, um, and well, they captured horses as well. Um, so, as you would sometimes see a Induna or other sort of high ranking. Zulus on horses. I really like him. I especially like he's got a gun. So 
there we go now i did these with the shields like they were from the uh the unmarried regiment down here the young kijo again sorry if that's the wrong pronunciation um and i wanted to put it on quite a big base mainly so i could actually just it wasn't really so i could fit the models on it it was so i could um just do this sort of slight rise at the the rocks and just make it interesting so all i did here was i added some milliput in and i pressed more of the uh, the rocks from the garden in and just dragged up the basing pace and then just tried to put down a decent layer of static grass and there he is so i was very pleased with how he came out um and then the two guys down here i just wanted them to look a little bit more official like they maybe they've been sent off to give orders um to the various uh amabuto um and those um, other regiments that they would have with them. So here you are. So this is um, the uh, the main backbone, I would say, of the Zulu army. This is how I want it to look. I've got some ideas for how I can add some little bits and bobs in. For the project, my goal, my ultimate goal, would be to have three sections, brigades, that look like this, with maybe a few more skirmish bases. So nine warband regiments. Um, and then three Indunas, then a general, then I'll, I'll have a, a main general, and um, and then lots of skirmishers, and then some other bits and bobs in there. Now, my way I've been thinking about maybe adding some flavour to the rules is potentially after deployment, rolling for each of these uh, regiments when they're on the board, just to see if maybe um, they've got a special ability. So, for example, you could just do something like roll a d6 um, on a roll of five or six, roll again, and maybe they have tough fighters or they're brave or they're stubborn, etc. So there's, it's not a sure thing, but it'd be a way of just adding some flavour and a bit of uncertainty to the opponent of the Zulus who um would be you know if, if you don't have any uncertainty be very cocksure i think about how they deploy and just you know bring that weight of fire I, I could try it out see how it goes or maybe maybe even um get the um um someone suggested on the plastic crack podcast actually when i mentioned this they said maybe uh don't roll until they actually get into combat Another thing I was thinking about adding in for the Zulus, now bear in mind I haven't actually played a game with these rules yet, but I play enough Black Powder and, and, and that um, stable of games, Hail Caesar and Pike and Shot, to, to know how things sort, sort of work. And the Zulus, even though they did fight en masse, they, they were in quite loose formations, from what I understand, until they actually closed, and then they would close together and, and charge. Um, so potentially to reflect that at certain ranges, maybe they could just count as an unclear target until maybe they get below 12 inches or something like that. So they, there's going to be that minus one to hit. I only say this because of the rules for the Martini Henry and some of the rules for the British just seem really, really overpowered. Um, and that is, for example, is that of the closing fire of the British, they get to fire two shots uh, in, in closing fire. So two sets of three dice chances are you are going to shake the unit as it comes in and the shaken unit on a charge will will fail its charge that being said does that reflect the period i mean there there are there are quite a few zulu victories in there but there are a lot of british victories as well and ultimately it is that weight of fire and fire discipline that, that sees them through um anyway talking about the british let me show you what i've done for them Okay, so here is my first British company that I've painted for the Anglo-Zulu War Project. Uh, these are Perry Miniatures as well, and as you can see, I haven't done quite as many for these as I have for the Zulus. I don't know, maybe it's about right, the right, right kind of ratio uh, per, um, per company or unit. Um, but this is how I'm going to be building my standard units. So um, as these are formed units, they don't have the warband rule like uh, for in black powder like the Zulus do. This will be the standard size I'm doing them. So three bases for each. And this will be a British company. There are eight companies to a battalion. Um, and in, in fact, there's this really, there's this great picture in one of the books by uh, Ian Knight. And um, in that you can see the uh, one, uh, one of the uh, regiments, one of the battalions from a regiment lined up just before the invasion and they're all standing in their company. So you can see all eight companies here and you can see the, the officers and the HQ staff. And so each of these lines is, uh, is a company and that's what I'm trying to represent here. Now I decided not to put them in a uh, in sort of too neat rank. So I, uh, I quite 
quite like in the midst of battle. You know, they are formed, they are defending. But there's a kind of two ranks in there, but they are responding to the attack. And um, I've now started positioning men at the flanks, actually not all just staring straight ahead, um, just to the sides as well. So you can actually get an idea that they are maybe looking at units that are swarming all around them. Um, so for these, this I've painted these up as if they are from um, the 24th foot. Um, obviously these are the guys who were at Isamwana. Well, one of the battalions was at Isamwana um, and one of the uh, companies uh, was at Rourke's Drift. Um, so there we go. There you go. I can show you what I've done with them. Um, I decided that I wanted these to look a bit more washed out and used than the red coats I'd done for my Napoleonic period. Um, and that's just how I think I've developed um, in my sort of painting style since I did those, which was, you know, seven years ago when I started doing those red coats. Um, the 24th foot were in South Africa for quite a while before the uh, the Zulu campaign. So I, I like the idea that maybe they're sort of a lot dirtier and, you know, they've, they've been in the field a lot longer. They only got uniforms like once a year. So, you know, I felt that, you know, there would be holes and patches and things in their kit. So... All of these are done with a base of contrast paints and then um, I work up the various highlights and colours on each of the, uh, the different areas um, with sort of normal techniques and then I weather them and add them onto the bases. I'm as tempted as I was to do the pith helmets um, in the sort of the, the nice bright white that you see in Zulu. I decided that going with sort of the tea and coffee stained uh, helmets um, which they, they did so you know so they didn't stand out so much uh, was was the order of the day um, and I think they've come out well I'm really pleased with them so we have a uh, corporal at the front there and again I've tried to put something interesting on each base um, so I had the corporal there another one there look um, just tried to mix up the uniforms a little bit and then just add in some sort of head injuries and uh, Again, just a helmet on the uh, on the base. I'm just try and make it a bit more visually interesting. And yeah, I did decide to do the eyes, like I did on my Zulus. And I don't know if you can see on that guy. I even went for some nice bushy eyebrows on this one. And on the command part, and there we have a captain. In the blue, sort of the black blue, Sergeant Major telling him what's going on, having a bit of a shout at him while these guys uh, reload and defend. And this guy at the back who's waving his helmet saying, you know, either, you know, rally on me or something to that effect. If I can get around, I can show I'd, I'm quite proud of the, uh, there we go, the face on him. So yeah, I've really enjoyed working on these. Now uh, I can get about two. I can get two of these and some leftovers out of each box of Perry's. So my plan for the British would be to have four companies at least of red coats. So that's two boxes of those. So maybe a couple from the 24 foot, uh, and then maybe I'll do one as the buffs. Um, maybe two as the buffs actually. I then want to uh, get some Naval Brigade because I really like the history of the Naval Brigade. I've been reading a lot about that and I'll probably do my like a whole video just dedicated to that when I get those painted up. But I want to have um, our company, um, well, basically a company size unit of the Naval Brigade, the Gatling guns, in fact, I'll show you that in a second, um, the cannons and the rockets. Um, so that would then be five. Get the rifle unit in there, that would be six companies, so six units this big, um, which is very, very doable. Um, as I said before, the battles are slightly smaller, so, you know, it's not as daunting as perhaps the Napoleonic project would be. And um, then I want to get some Natal native contingent and some cavalry and some bits like that. So uh, it's quite a way to go. But as I said, I wanted to give you an update. And coming up next, well, I've got another unit like this to do for the British and then probably a couple left over to do um, like the heliograph that comes in the box. However, I did pick up, and you might have seen this in the update video, a Gatling gun from Empress Miniatures. And oh, I'm looking forward to getting this stuck together and these scale in 
very nicely with the Perry's. I think that might have been a very conscious decision there. Um, enough character, so there's a bit of a difference. So I will be picking up um, the Naval Brigade, a whole um, a whole load of that to, to add in. Um, anyway, like I said, I wanted to give you guys a, a bit of an update on what had been going on uh, while uh, I've been working on this. So I am just having a slight break at the moment while I, uh, I finish off um, a couple other things and then I'll be doing another unit of these, uh, getting the Gatling gun done and uh, potentially some more British. So stay tuned. Anyway, is there any, if you guys got any um, ideas, other things that perhaps I could do for the Zulu War, I have considered doing some Boers as well, so I could do bits of the Boer War. Um, and um, I, I was looking at um, a couple of uh, really, really nice sort of characterful figures from the Empress range just to add in some maybe just some single based models as well, just to uh, add a bit of visual interest. But let me know what you guys think. Are you considering the Anglo-Zulu War? Is it something you've already got? How did you go about it? Um, I am looking at other rule sets as well, um, but I'm willing to take any other suggestions um, that you might have on different rules to play. So I hope you guys uh, are all staying safe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Um, I'll leave some pictures up and I will see you guys again in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.